All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the stream. I am Razim, and this is Horizon Lost World of Darkness. Uh, technically a mage game uh, in the World of Darkness uh, universe. But we're just going to stick with the World of Darkness thing there. Make it easier for connecting them no, um, all, you know. But yeah, thank you all so much for joining. I am going to turn it over to uh, Kerr here in just a moment. Uh, basically, brand new tabletop game starting today. Uh, so yeah, Kerr, go ahead. Okay. <sighs> Sorry, getting into the mental state. Mm. Sh shouldn't you have done that before we got started? Well, yes, but I have to be in the proper <laughs> state here to do my introduction. Here, I will um, start. Good vibe, puppies. <laughs> uh, greetings, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the game. Uh, today we have a game of mage for your pleasure to enjoy. I am back again, running games, so... Hello. But nice to be back. <clears throat> and here we have a game taking place in the World of Darkness. For those of you who don't know, the World of Darkness is a world very much like our own. Hello, Chocobo-kun. It is nice to have you back. <laughs> yes, happy fun times, Sirio. Happy fun times. Welcome all playing audience members and assorted freeloaders. <laughs> In the World of Darkness, the World of Darkness is a world very much like our own. It is a world where the same people are usually in power, the same countries exist, the same places are popular for the most part. Except... It's a little worse off. There's a little less hope in the world. Things are a little more bleaker. Disasters tend to be a little more, well, pardon the pun, disastrous. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. Everything, everything just seems a little darker, a little worse. And, oh yes, let's not forget the vampires, werewolves, ghosts, demons, mummies, Fair folk, changelings, and other assorted supernatural elements that are running around, causing havoc, chaos, and, well, general, uh, dickbaggery. For the most part. I mean, there's some good ones. Don't worry about it, though. Don't worry about it. And so, with the introduction of the world itself taken care of, Allow me to bid you all welcome to the city of Empty Springs, Colorado. It is a very large city. It's around a million population, give or take, on any given day, month, or year. It can fluctuate quite a bit. Don't worry about it, though. Don't worry about it. Um, in the city of Empty Springs, Colorado, is something that few would really be likely to see, honestly. Supernatural beings that aren't at each other's throats trying to kill each other, or manipulate each other, or do horrible things to each other. The vampires, werewolves, ghosts, and other assorted factions for the most part, exist in a state of sort of cold war in Empty Springs. They don't like each other, but they tolerate each other. You know, a half a dozen near apocalyptic events happening in a city tends to bring people together. Wasn't my so, fault. Uh, so while uh, the history of Empty Springs is long, varied, and chaotic, 
the various supernatural elements have weathered the storms that have constantly besieged the city and their world. And these events have helped to bring them together in a way few other things could. And that is where we meet our characters. Mages. Those who are awakened to the nature of reality. That it is not some static monolith of unchanging laws. But instead shaped by the beliefs and thoughts of every living person. And here I think I will turn over to my players to introduce themselves to everybody. I figure we just go across the top. Portia? Portia Wainwright, researcher, scientist, Doctor Extraordinaire. I, per I, I pursue the study of alchemy as a means for bettering the world around me. I prefer to solve my problems through words, negotiation, peaceful remedies. When that doesn't work, there are always tranquilizers. <laughs> Portia is a member of the Verbena. Mages who, for the most part, believe um, in more... Hmm? Portia, I think. Yeah, it's Portia. Portia. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I misheard it. Um, is a member Portia of the Verbena. Wait, my good man. <laughs> the Verbena believe in more natural magics. When one thinks of Wiccan or Witchcraft, one is likely thinking of possibly a Verbena uh, mage. They are masters of the sphere of life magic, affecting the pattern of all living things is their specialty. And we will continue on to our next member, Warren. Hello, I am Warren, Warren Peace, a traditional <laughs> mage from the Order of Hermes. And thank you. He will be back. I was waiting just... for that. <laughs> I, 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 he's still... <laughs> I, I choose to believe he's still giving his monologue from the well. I, I, I was waiting for you to introduce yourself with your name to throw you into the well for that name. <laughs> it's an entrapment. Okay. I'm calling my lawyer. <laughs> and that's my introduction. Oh, no. Go on with the real one, please. <laughs> How much did people hear? Uh, literally, as soon as you said your name, I moved you down. So he was still giving the monologue in the well. <laughs> okay. I am Warren Peace. Oh, okay. Let me move you A down. traditional mage of the Order of Hermes. And I'm going to be making things interesting with using primal magic. For those who do, are not initiated into the secrets... The Order of Hermes are the more traditional mages, or, as I personally like to think of them, mages with a small tree stuck up their asses. They are, yes, they are the ones who believe in magical incantations, sacred runes etched in a circle to summon and bind demons. Basically, think you're generic Gandalfs and Harry Potters. Um, but they have a bit of a pride issue, a.k.a. I want to drown them. I want to drown them in a well this very <laughs> night. Hey, hey, I've got a five in medicine. Go ahead and drown him. I'll resuscitate him, then you can drown him again. It'll be fine. I approve of this plan. Anyway, continue on. To our next person, Reinhardt.
Moriarty. I didn't mean to drown him, I swear. I didn't toss him into the, the lake yet. Quick. quick, to the next person. Alexis. Alexis McKenna, sage, explorer, intellectual, examiner of the mysteries of the mind. I'm in the cult of ecstasy, and I pursue the discoveries that one can make through the explorations of one's own psyche. The cult of ecstasy has a bad reputation. Hey, um, hey they don't have a bad I reputation mean, with me. They're one of my best clients. Fair. I mean, among most people, they have a bad reputation. That is not wholly undeserved, necessarily. That that yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. The the uh, cult of ecstasy believes in seeking out new perception and ways to perceive the world, and that it is through this exploration of sensation and mentalism that they can move beyond this reality to see into what really is rather than what blinds them here the issue comes from the facts of they tend to use drugs sex and rock and roll for it they were extremely big in the 60s as you can imagine which is sort of where their reputation comes from it is not one that all of them aspire to but it is something that many of them have not been able to shake off. Oh, I personally hope that he doesn't shake it off. Anytime I need to try something new, I can just say, here, try this. He doesn't even hesitate. <sighs> Children, I swear. <laughs> it's called science. Oh, and so finally, oh, magic. Cody. <clears throat> Her, I think you uh, scared off Toshime from completing this donation goal. <laughs> I did see his message, but I didn't want to say anything. I thought Toshime would have loved torturing you guys. <laughs> Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Wait, Umbral Jump? That's the donation goal? Yes. <laughs> Don't worry about it. No! Bad! <laughs> Don't worry about it. See? See? Look. You you have a uh, Courage Martin here to help you all. <laughs> Dear God, is this what it feels like when I'm playing Outlast? This is invigorating. Yeah, speaking of, you should play that again. <laughs> I love watching you all suffer. Don't worry, though. The the donation goal will be fine. I'm certain to, uh, Kerr would not, you know, destroy the, the, the entire campaign the moment we got started. No. No, I, w I would not do that. Of course not. I'm not salty. <laughs> <laughs> now you're just flavoring the Martin's uh, food doll, uh, food bowl. <laughs> and, and now we have Cody. Oh boy, everybody has set such a high bar already. <laughs> I am Cody Taylor, uh, a millionaire. Perhaps even billionaire. I I haven't bothered checking the books in a bit, but I, I know it's a lot of money. Um, I, I am a virtual adept. Uh, I practice... I, I basically twist the world like my own little matrix. I, bending every little fabric of reality as I please. I... Cody is basically the bankroll of the party. Uh, he's got a lot of money, and everybody is freeloading off of him and his uh, elaborate home, as well as grounds that he owns. And 
You are the Tony Stark to our Peter Parker. Yes, yes. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's perfect, actually. Yeah. Because I'm still very much involved. It's just, you know. I don't know what else to say about him. <laughs> and Otherwise, let's move um, <laughs> So this one uh, here on my shoulders is uh, Marticus, uh, my uh, wonderful little companion, uh, familiar, a Japanese Martin. Though, really, that's just the form it takes. It is a uh, spirit. Marticus is cute and adorable. Marticus is very cute and adorable. And I love that Mary drew it with uh, Marticus getting pets. <laughs> um, is Moriarty back yet? I don't Moriarty? know where Moriarty went. He poof. He was assassinated. Looks like he went the, to the Umbral before us. We have our first mystery. <laughs> Clearly, we need to uh, get that donation goal completed so that way we can we you know, go rescue him. Reinhard. <laughs> Reinhard has been kidnapped. <laughs> Change his donation goal. Rescue Reinhardt. <laughs> <laughs> Which kind of sucks, because he's the investigator to find out what happened to himself. So. Which is why they took him first. Exactly. Ah, nefarious. You, you always hit the security cameras before you break in. Everybody knows that. We just need to find the gauntlet first. Duke. We, we need Reinhardt. <laughs> so I can introduce him. <laughs> My test have to start without him. Yes, but I'm also looking at a cute, adorable Martin right now. Oh, don't, don't, don't make me start spending these egg marks. I will. They're cute. Right. Okay, I'll be right um, back. Just getting a bottle of water real quick. This okay. might not do anything, but I must know. Which is do. Uh, as it says in the uh, description of that redemption, uh, it doesn't do anything nothing. up there. This will do nothing if the avatar is not on the screen. He was num numbed. Ah. Oh well. So you'll have to come to one of my other streams, one of my non tabletop yeah. streams, to see that. No. <laughs> as have another Martin. We are just getting all the Martin videos today. I am A-OK -okay with this. Martin really wants the toffee. Parkour! Well, I guess I'll I... have to help with the introduction. I suppose we will just have to go into game and he it's will introduce himself. You and your when we... Ruin as many people's lives, so long as you can make a name for yourself as an investigatory journalist, no matter how many friends you lose, or people you leave dead and bloody along the way, just so long as you can make a name for yourself as an investigatory journalist, no matter how many friends you lose, or people you leave dead and bloody and dying along the way. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that works. What the hell was that? What the hell Fair. was that? Fair? That, that was a sound effect, uh, Tanya. Uh, I know it was a sound effect, but what was that from? No idea. So, I suppose let us begin the game finally. Uh, that was from Zoolander. Ah. Your Google Foo is strong. Or you could just click on the sound bite and it tells you. <laughs> Why would I do things that make sense? You, it's like you don't even know me. <laughs> so, let us begin. 
with each of you receiving an invitation. The invitations are in a red envelope and each of the letters are also engraved with your name and your address and along the edges of the envelope is gold like actual gold on it i need my scissors let's just kind of trim that off <laughs> Within the letter itself, if you take the time to open it, is an invitation to the Sixth Circle, one of the most exclusive clubs here in Empty Springs. And what's your guys' occult? Uh, I'm I have bring my two. sheet back up here. I two. have one in occult. And two in Esoterica. Three. Wait, what, what's going on here? <laughs> what's your occult, Cody? Uh, three. Okay, all of you are also aware that this is also the place for the supernaturals to meet. This is the place to be for any type of supernatural shindig or supernatural going on. Oko Bongo Club. It is also, you would know, that this place is also considered neutral ground among the supernatural factions. You can go in here, and as long as you stay in good faith, you will not be attacked. That's not to say someone might not be waiting outside to shoot you, but within the walls of this place, you are safe from all supernatural attack. Anyone who tries to break this, well, let's just say that they are never seen again. Yeah, ever seen John Wick? Basically that. <laughs> and what's the name of this place? The Sixth Circle. It is, like, to the mortals that can't actually go there, it is the, like, most exclusive of exclusive clubs. Only the very best of the best are able to be allowed in, usually. Unless you're supernatural. Anyone, anyone in any of the supernatural factions or are with someone of that group is allowed in as well. I mean, vampires need a food source, after all. Woo! And is it, ju it just says, you know, your presence is requested, or does it have any, like, details? Um, when you look at it, um, it is an invitation from Sir Alric Benneret, the owner of the club, to speak with him in private. And somebody too important to brush off. I guess I'll go. With Within the supernatural circles, he's basically legendary. This is like the guy who brokered the peace between all the factions. Nobody knows what he is. Nobody knows what he is. And considering some of the big movers and shakers that are present in the city, that's a big thing that no one knows what he is. Because it's not from lack of trying. I'll hit it now. He's an Eldritch God. Mm, 24. 24? I don't understand. That's how many times someone has guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Frieza. Uh, 
Well, no reason not to go, I guess. Does anyone do anything? The club um, doesn't open usually until sunset. Does it give a time and date? Um, sunset. Opening of the club. Usually the club opens at sunset when the sun goes down so that the vampires can come. Uh, and what, are the, all night. what are the club's policies on weapons? So long as they are not drawn and used, you are fine to bring them in for self-defense in case anything happens. However, if you cause any problems, it's not going to be pretty. Um, you would know the supernatural factions very much respect these laws. Laws of safe passage freely given are very much usually followed to the letter, if not the spirit. Auric is usually on the up and up of he will follow the law and the spirit. And I guess I'll have to dress up. Oh my god. I'm uh, Warren, if you go out with that robe and hat again, you are not going with us. I don't know, he has kind mean? of a Renaissance fair I, look like that. I posted in Mage. <laughs> That's even worse. See? You you look like when someone up. holds a you look like when someone holds a magnet up to a TV. <laughs> 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 you okay? Fabulous. Fabulous. You dog. go out in that, and I am going to pull out my flamethrower and introduce you to it. Do you have something else that I can dress up in better? <sighs> Let me call my tailor. The fact that you have uh, a tailor just, on retainer. This is... image for the Discord to see, or for for the stream to see. Uh, we will, yeah, we'll post that up in, uh, tabletop image. You all can go see it there, what, uh, Tosha May shared. Uh, just reminder, February 20th, 2022. At about, well, I guess I shouldn't say the time, because it'll show you in your local time, but that is where it's at. It's on the Discord tabletop image. Um, these kinds of things are very well protected copyright, uh, law, so I don't want to bring it up on stream itself. Right. Well, since we, since we have some time before the club opens and they're busy dealing with their suit, I'm going to get a couple cups of coffee and see if I can find where my avatar's hanging out, see if she has any input regarding the invitation. You have not seen them at all. Like, you have not also heard from her at all since you got this invitation. Oh, that's disconcerting. That doesn't usually happen. Usually she's busy in the lab, kind of working on new ideas to offer you or guidance to assist you in your newest endeavor. You haven't seen her, though, since she saw that letter and just vanished. Like, she, she, she was busy, like, she needed to take care of some things, and just left. Well, that's a, that is a message in and of itself. Anything from anyone else before we head to the club? Anything anyone wants to do? Well, nothing really to do. Yeah. I mean, Cody is calling up his tailor, and uh, they'll be over in, you know, a few minutes and get, uh, he'll get Warren a proper suit. You know, something casual enough to be done uh, for, you know, 
to work for the club and such. Mm -hmm. Since my avatar pulled a Bugs Bunny, and I've maybe we've still got time, I'm just going to spend the rest of the time tending to the tree. Okay. Cody's also going to be uh, calling up everybody else. I I kind of assume he's got in, an intercom system that just, you know, connects to all the different parts of the uh, property. One especially right next to the tree. You actually probably, if you and um, our spirit mage work together, you could have set up something for within the uh, trees area as well. Their tree, they have a special tree on the grounds. One that looks like an old, sort of decrepit tree, but it is filled with magical power, and tied to it is a rift into uh, <laughs> the margin phones. Um, I mean, with enough influence, that could happen, Sirio. Tied to it is a sanctum of basically a small sort of house-like area that serves as a sort of bastion for them to work their magic safely and without fear of someone else interfering with them. You know the TARDIS? We have the treatise. Yes, I can dis I can disagree with that technically. <laughs> but one of the things they have to do is to um is she has to tend to the tree in order to ensure that it stays healthy and good. It's very very needy. It's a it's a grumpy old man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it very much is. Got to have the pH just right. Got to keep the water the the soil hydration just right. Last week I had to spend 3 hours flushing out aphids because one of them called it a dirty name. <laughs> So, has Domino arrived yet? You know, my tailor? <laughs> uh, oh, hello, darling! Oh, I'm so glad that you called me up! Oh, oh my! I see why you called me up. Yes, this this is what he wanted to wear. No, 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 no. This will not do. I will not suffer this vile imperfection in my presence. It is now off of you. It is now on fire. The fire is blue, purple, yellow, and fish. <laughs> hey, that was a classic. Darling, no, no. You will not be caught dead in that oh, it gives me the oh god I can feel my own perfection being leached away just by thinking about it no 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 we have something far more grand to put you in mm, yeah something bold something striking something fabulous for those who don't know Domino is one of the fair folk he is a being of Basically, pure madness, insanity, and chaos. And a recurring uh, character. <laughs> yes, he he tends to show up in all of uh, all of my World of Darkness games are linked. That's why almost all of my games take place in Empty Springs, Colorado, and the events of one game influence and affect later on game. Domino is imagine dressed in like a 16th or 17th century baroque outfit of very fancy uh weave powdered face powdered wig and he is absolutely fabulous darling he is fabulous and he is utterly and totally obsessed with perfection he is perfect Everything around him must be perfect, and if it is not perfect, then he will arrange to ensure that it is perfect. I was not expecting Kurt to actually let me just have Domino on speed dial as a tailor, but I am loving it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't disagree because it's something he would totally do. He, he's, he fits the bill perfectly, he really does. 
Uh, Syria, actually, as you are suddenly fitted with a perfect outfit, completely and utterly made of salt. Yes. Yes, it was, Serio. I was actually planning on that. Uh, the problem with this outfit, though, Domino, is that it won't really last if it gets wet or such. Can we get oh, something do not made wait. of fabric? I have improved its perfection. It will not run. It will not fall apart. It is even more perfect than it was before. Ah, truly, truly, you, you have a fantastic work of art on you. This will be interesting. Yes, but fabric. <sighs> I see why my sister loves you so, Cody. And why is she so gung-ho about trying to get you? Mm. Uh, you have her fashion sense. Did you have... Her terrible, terrible taste in fashion. It is more normal taste. Just simply elevated above the more the common folk. You simply do not understand perfection, darling. Look at this. The smooth whiteness. The shine upon it. The perfect molecular structure. Not a single bit out of place. It is absolutely perfect, darling. While I appreciate the perfection of salt, it is not appropriate for every situation. As you recall, Name one situation that it is not perfect in, darling. It would not make a perfect re replica of this adorable little thing. And he gestures towards Marticus. As, as, as there is now a salt Marticus running around and playing with Marticus. See, it's still not perfect. You are lucky that my sister has forbidden you by our contract to directly affect you with my magic. Otherwise, you would be a Salt Martin right now, just to show you their true perfection. Well, yes, but they are lacking the fluff, the fur, the, the smooth uh, feeling that I would get from petting it. It's just as amazing. As Warren is now dressed in Martins. I'm I'm back, everyone. The old man's been watered and has finally stopped complaining about the. <laughs> Who's been burning fish? It smells like fish and fire in here. What happened? As you do see Warren dressed in Martins, little chittering Martins holding each other together. You know. Jesus Christ! How horrifying. <laughs> Oh, darling, so good to see you. Have you finally decided to abandon that crotchety old man for something better? Truly, you can do better, darling. You truly can. I have some wonderful friends I could introduce you to. Yeah, I prefer friends that don't have caveats attached. You mortals and your morals and beliefs and... And self-preservation instinct and logic and reason. I know they're mm. very troubling. I find it quite endearing and adorable, honestly. So back to the outfit. Uh, while I definitely appreciate that, it would not fit very well for uh, the club that we are going to. Darling, any club that you go into with any of my outfits will automatically be elevated. Oh, I agree, which is why I was hoping for something more standard to uh, today's uh, fashion senses, which would unfortunately mean fabric rather than uh, salt or margarine. He's now dressed in rainbows. What? He is now dressed in rainbows. I got you here to get rid of that. Hmm... Yes, but I do think he looks good in that. Domino, I'm Just... not one to judge your outfits, but you do know Pride Month is over, right? 
darling, it can be whatever it wants, whatever I say it is. I elevate everything with my perfection, and whatever I say is automatically perfect and correct. You should get into politics. And does it go well with my staff? Yes, your staff is also rainbows. Even though it's cold iron? Oh! Oh, um... <laughs> uh... <laughs> and you have already <laughs> broken him, Toshime. <laughs> so, why are you to take the DM? <laughs> oh my god. You okay, what was that, Kerr? Um, <laughs> Domino is standing ten feet away from you. <laughs> and he is pointedly not looking at the staff. Aw, grumpy. <laughs> now, please, could we get something made of fabric? Uh, something that would be fitting for this day and age? Boring, 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 boring. Why do I not have anyone who understands my perfection? Ah, but truly, truly, this is the perfect trial for me. In order to assist others in understanding my perfection, they need baby steps to understand it. Come on, Domino. You can use your perfect fortitude to power through this. As he is now dressed in a beautiful white suit. You know... Just throwing this out there, it doesn't necessarily have to be fabric. I mean, leather exists, plastic exists. You know, we should probably get one for the hippie as well. I have my own clothes. And what were you planning to wear for this invitation? I have a dress. I don't know hey. if anyone could hear that. There was a knock at your front door. <sighs> Cody will go to the front door to answer. Standing upon your porch is a woman clad in Victorian finery. He's Her outfit closing the is door. To give everyone real quick, her outfit is pure <laughs> blood wet red, with hair as white as snow. Ah, oh, God, stop, slam! Knock, 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 knock. Cody. <sighs> Cody, why? He opens the door. Oh, Hello, God, son. True. Oh, no, 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 please. Call me Anamad. Oh. Honestly. Calling my brother. How crass. He understands perfection unlike someone. Oh, dear brother, you do not understand the first meaning of that word. You just like to play your little games. Now, the adults are talking, so why don't you go and go find some salt to play with? There's literal lightning between these two right now, I might add. Literal lightning between their eyes. Uh, Cody is jumping out of the way very quickly. And the old man is awake again. Thank you for that. I head back outside. Anyone specific in forces want to calm this down? <laughs> Honestly, Not you called in between him, honestly. When this should be something a fairy godmother does for her child. I'm I would almost be hurt by this. If I couldn't point and laugh at his paltry outfits. As if you could do any better, dear sister. Oh watch. As she claps her hands twice. And Warren's outfit turns into Leak, a black overcoat, a white undershirt, and golden filigree flowing around it into silver 
uh, outlines along the sleeves and hems of the outfits. That is how you do true clothing, darling. This is fashion. Needs more salt. No, salt is not required for these outfits at all. I just want to know at what point in time he got it in his head that salt is a clothing item. Uh, he's a fair folk. Logic need not apply to them. It is a clothing item because he desires it to be. Uh-huh. As the woman is going to break off the glare to look at Cody. Ah, godson. Truly, have you have you thought about my offer of coming to work for me willingly? Perhaps at some point well down the road. I do have a very nice setup as it is, you know? And I really could mm. not leave my adoring fans behind. They need me. <laughs> oh, darling, you just do not understand the way of things. But if you want to continue playing your paltry games, I suppose I can allow it. Events have not run astray that I cannot allow you this small, meager fun. For now. I do hope you enjoy your little playdate today, though. I am sure it is to be illuminating. Now, come, brother! We have things to do, and my godson must not be late. He has to make a good first impression, after all. As she blows you a kiss before snapping her fingers, and both of the fair folk vanish. Oh, I really hope the others have uh, better outfits, because I do not want to call them again. Just poke my head back in. They're gone now, right? Good. Yes, and what is this dress that you spoke of having? It's a formal dress. I've had it for years. Oh no. Bring it before me. And where is Alexis? Alexis has been watching this from a distance, trying, uh, trying not to be seen. <laughs> wise. Very wise. <laughs> You're putting me on the spot. I, I, assume, I, I assume we'd all had run in with these folks before and know not to. Uh... Likely, uh, Domino is one of the very well known fair folk around this area um, due to the facts of many of the changelings know him and dealt with him, and some mages actually gave him a soul once. Is that. How did that turn out? Uh, he still has it. He has a. Um, one of the reasons why he kind of can show up like this without you guys having to worry about dying horribly is because he does have an actual consciousness now. It confuses is him. That, is that conscience? Yeah, yes, yeah, sorry. Conscience, okay. Well, also consciousness too, because it's, it's complicated with them. Duke. Okay. So you kind of put me on the spot there with the whole dress thing because I am not an expert in fashion in the slightest, so I have yeah. no idea how to describe or where to start from one. You had well, comments I'm... on mine, no? <laughs> I am not well, a fashion wouldn't? guru person either, um, so I'm good with it. You, you know, you're just describing it how you want. It's just as long as it's not the travesty that uh, Tosha May shared. Yeah, you know, <laughs> a pretty standard suit and tie for Alexis. <laughs> I might be a little colorful. And. 
Hey, that was fall 2020 fashion. <laughs> that was not fashion. That that was oh. nothing close to fashion. It made it on the Isn't runway. That, seems like Domino's not the only one with salt. <laughs> also, you would all know never to say the P word. I am not dead. Pestilence? Yes. But I'm not no, the forbidden dead. word. Pumpernickel. The opposite of imperfect, I think. Yes. That has the word in it. Assy. Duke. Martins! <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, wait, wait. It, it's presentable. That's the opposite of imperfect, right? <laughs> he is fierce to do snoot. He has you a teeth. <laughs> Boop. They boot his snoot. Sorry, I was distracted. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess we're off to the club. Does anyone know what happened to Moriarty? Did he get eaten? Did he die? Did someone assassinate him without my permission? I thought we decided that he's stuck in the Umbra right now, and we got to get that donation goal filled to go save him. <laughs> I know, but I still had to say that. I have no idea where he went. He was here before we started, and now he's just... He's still at God. boys. I sent him a message, but no reply so yet. Back. He's still he showing us online. Can anybody go try calling him? One, two, three, not it. Let me see. Okay, Toshime, I'm throwing you into the lake for that. Sure, but you do need PvP for certain things, so I do need to eventually do it. I'm not going to say I'm going to do it constantly, but I'll probably start doing it more. That is a crime of the highest caliber, Toshime. It was a chili cheese dog. I will bring this crime up on stream. No luck. This. There. This is what Toshime sent me. I don't see it. Welcome. Screen. What's wrong with that? I. Oh. Um. 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 No. Wait, where is this at? On the stream. On stream. <laughs> I I had my Discord up. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Chili cheese dogs are sacred. And damn it, now I really want some. <laughs> I need to find a place around here that makes some. Anyways, uh, I, I guess we're all. Uh... So yeah, uh, Cody's going to call out for uh, Lexus, uh, trying to figure out where he is. I've been watching just from a distance. Well, yeah, but you were trying back. not to be seen. Well, by by those two, when they're when they're gone, I'll I'll kind of poke my head back out. Oh, there you are, Alexis. Uh, what what do you have for an outfit? I have a pretty standard suit and tie. I assume that's acceptable. Let me see the tie. <laughs> so black suit, but the tie is going to be like an iridescent rainbow affair. Constantly shifting colors, depending on the angle you look at it. 
That's actually a real thing. Okay, and give me a moment. I will call up Domino again. Hey, come on, man. <laughs> I am surrounded. We don't. We don't. By we don't really things. need. We don't really need to bring him back into this, do we? If you're going to insist on wearing that, then yes. <sighs> Have some decorum, man. Very well, I think I have one other I can try. Oh, there Short. You go. I, I... oh sorry, I thought you were done. Ah. Yeah, I don't know about that one either. <laughs> oh, there. The, I posted an image. That is the outfit. Since you put me on the spot there. <laughs> I'm back with a forest green tie. Much less shifting and iridescent. Is this acceptable? I suppose that is acceptable. I totally don't have the iridescent one in my pocket, by the way. Just, just wanted to make you, just want to make that clear. <laughs> Roll for deception. <laughs> Let me just say that if you do pull that out, I will be calling Domino immediately. As you know, I have him on speed dial, or rather, mm. I just have to say one particular word, and he will be here. It looks per. I won't say it. It looks purple. Purdy. <laughs> Purdy. <laughs> I'm just enjoying you guys here. <laughs> there. So, yeah, Porsche's dressed now in quote unquote formal attire. You know the thing that I absolutely hate about formal clothing? There's no room for my notes. There's no room for my gun. Sympathize. There's, there's just no pocket space in this. It's, it's ridiculous. Well, provided these, this place holds true to its word, we will not need those. Yeah, nonetheless, I'm still bringing a purse with my stuff in it. Very well. As long as it <laughs> and looks And you're also nice. a mage. May, may, yeah. uh, maybe a mage, but because her focus requires uh, drawing alchemy sigils, um, I would at the very least need to bring like a pen or a marker or a piece of bring... chalk. Here's something simple. Lipstick. Yeah, that works. And it's inconspicuous. So off to the club we go then. Uh, for Do we the bring record, weapons? Um, Cody is going to be wearing a suit from Hugo Boss. <laughs> I looked up the suits that Lucifer wears. Ah! Uh, oh my god! <laughs> of I, I'm totally imagining him, you know, in those really high-end suits. Yeah, he would. He does like to dress casually, but when it's called for, he can, he really cleans up well. And, and right, he will that, have yeah. uh, one of his guns concealed on himself. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll carry my uh, semi-auto, or is it full auto? Which one do I have? My pistol. Mm -hmm. Heavy, heavy pistol. I got a heavy pistol. And I'll bring my quotation walking stick. <laughs> It'll be yeah, a no, forty-four okay. magnum that he brings. Okay. It's no problem to drive about the oh half hour to get there. It's it's pretty far actually from the richest part of town. It's more 
Most of the high ritz mansions and manors and such are at the edge of the northern part of town. While the club is more towards in the center of the town. So it's about a 20-30 minute drive with traffic to get to there. And you imagine, would... Uh, just for the record, I don't imagine Cody's house is in the rich part of town necessarily. Um... Kind of, because uh, he, he's he got a lot of a sizable forest area that is part of his uh, property as well as beyond it. Oh, yeah, you would still be able to do that in okay. that part of town. Okay, mm -hmm. just wanted to make sure. Yep, no, you're good. Yeah. Um, the werewolf territory tends to be actually in Central Park, in the area. There is a actual park basically just south of the center of town and <laughs> it is a massive natural park or uh and well don't try to fuck with anything in there because the werewolves will go ballistic that's sort of their territory you don't fuck with their, their stuff and as you guys head to the club, there is no issues. Also, I kind of want to make the joke right now as I did not plan any of this because I didn't really think that uh, I kind of thought the donation goal was going to be met before. <laughs> <laughs> you scared as the sugar daddy away. As I have told other DMs, plan for the donation goal's effects to go into effect the next session. If at all. Yeah. I, I am used to, like, every one of my games, the donation goal always instantly being met, like, literally before we start or right when we start. <laughs> so it's like, okay, I'm pretty sure this is going to happen, because it always happens every single game. So I'm going to plan around it to make sure I'm ready for it, so it's not going to surprise me. And then it surprises me. As far as fuck-ups go, this is just perfect. Oh, darling, did you say perfect? Hello, everyone, how are you doing? Honestly, have you considered getting a bigger vehicle? As Domino appears in the car as it's driving towards the uh, club. Uh, that, that was out of character, though. <laughs> Alexis puts matter. his head in his hands. It's still... <laughs> Someone said it! <laughs> You get back on the other side of the fourth wall where you belong. <laughs> it's still a fair folk. It's still fair. That's an unfair folk. Oh, darling. Are you sure? I I'm, I'm happily married at the moment, but if you ever um, wish to enjoy perfection, I'm more than willing. If you continue whispering sweet nothings in my ear, I'm going to shove his staff in one end of you and out the other. Did you have to talk so dirty? Look at that filthy thing! <sighs> it gives me the heebie-jeebies just looking at it. <laughs> you give me the heebie-jeebies just looking at you. It's true, some people do not understand my glorious perfection. But it's okay. I can help you learn more about it. I prefer to bat within my league. I don't need to, uh, you know, try to go in for the stars. I'm happy down here in the dirt. Oh, darling, you are far more than the dirt. You are at least a sapling. Oh, That was... oddly deep. Suspiciously deep. Who'd you play drives it from? I can either conform or deny such heinous allegations against my perfection. How much longer is it to get to the club? About ten minutes. I can only tolerate Pizza Hut for so long. <laughs> you guys would uh, reach the club without any incidents other than possible fraying sanity. Uh, depends on how well you guys can stand Domino for ten minutes in an enclosed space. If there was sanity damage, I might say you might need to make a sanity roll to, to keep from going insane. But alas, there isn't. 
No, no, I, I, I just, I just sit closer to the staff. I'm perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and when you arrive at the club, it is quite nice looking, actually. It is nothing really special. Just the words, the sixth circle, um, above a door leading down into the ground. It steps down to get to the door itself. And at the edge of the stairs are two men in black suits who look to be serving as the bouncers. And there is a, already a massive line to get into the club. Respectfully approach the bouncer and invitation in hand. He will reach his hand out for the invitation. Obviously, I'll give it to him. Uh, he will take it, a look over it. Um, he's kind of like really staring at it before nodding and handing it back to you and waving a hand down to go down the stairs to the, the uh, club. Well, come on, guys. You come on, why? Following suit, I guess. Okay. <laughs> each one, each time, they will check your invitation. Ensure that it is legitimate before allowing you through as well without incident or trouble. And the inside of the club, it is big. It is... Like, this entire building looks like it was change to be this it is at least three stories high from what you can see in this room alone there is a dance floor couches uh pillows and blankets for those who want some um there is a massive massive bar along one wall and stairs leading up to catwalks as well as doors set in the sides of the walls and up on the second floor as well. And it looks like there is a third floor as well, though. That takes a spiral staircase to get up to, which is currently blocked off with a bouncer in front of it. VIP section. Okay, for a second I thought you were going to say, huh, with a spiral dancer standing right there. No, no. It's just, just a pole dancer on the spiral staircase. You try to get up without permission, they just start kicking. Not a BSD. And that's the that's one of the bad characters that everybody would be. Kill it. Kill it with fire. Even on this sacred ground. But yes, um, when you guys do come in, the bouncer will wave you guys over to him. Take the small um, strap that is blocking the staircase off and wave you to go upstairs. And up we go. I've got nothing to add here. Unless Cody needs to grab anything from here. Or talk no, to I double check. I got, what's going up. Nah, I got nothing else to add. We're all going up. I'm legitimately curious what happened to Moriarty. Yeah, I'm kind of worried about him too. So as you guys go upstairs, you are led to a large office door. It is fairly um, markless. There isn't even like a nameplate or anything. 
at least the door handle, right? Oh, yes. Okay, so I have to, like, you know, scan the invitation like a card. <laughs> no, there's just, a, there's just a normal door handle on it is all. Well, to come on, Tony Stark. You're the most important out of all of us. You should lead the way. Cody. Y you know, he actually got a lot of his uh, special effects from me. Uh, Cody will enter. Inside is a fairly... Basic looking um, office and eh, nothing really special. And sitting at the desk, uh, typing away at a computer, is a man in a white suit. Ah, fairly normal looking. Nothing really too special. Uh, blonde hair. And bright blue eyes. And he is going to stop his work as you guys come in. And look up. And smile. Oh. You got my invitation? Good, good, good. Welcome, welcome. Come. Come take a seat. And there are... Six chairs set out. For you guys. Okay, I'll take one on the end. Everyone takes a seat, I'm assuming, or... Yeah. Yep. Ah, uh, yes. Warren, Reinhardt, Lexus, Cody, Domino. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and so... As you guys take your seats... The man is going to uh, look away from the computer and towards you all and nod. Um, for those who haven't met me, I am Alric Benerit. It's nice to meet you all in person. And I thank you for accepting my invitation to come here and talk with me. Right now, we're still waiting on one more guest to come. And once they arrive, we can begin with what I want to talk with all of you about. Truly, this is the dankest dungeon. <laughs> well, of all the things well, for us to talk about, yeah, that is one of the, that is a very important one. This is a great club. It is the dankest dungeon. <laughs> Thank you for the donation, Tanya. The donation goal has not been completed. Uh, yeah. With her. I see. I know, that's torture. <laughs> it's okay. I just wasn't sure if anyone was going to say anything before I continued. Nope, I got nothing to add. Who's yeah, the other I don't know what else like? to do here. I figured you'd so, ask who was coming. Well, I guess we could. <sighs> well, I, uh, <laughs> I figured that we would know guest? when they arrived. And uh, who is this other guest? He is a close friend of mine. And one who told me about all of this that's coming that I would need your assistance for. 
by the way, Kurt, uh, real quick, um, what is enhanced clothing, and would Cody be able to have it? Is that like magically enhanced clothing? Uh, technocrat stuff. Okay, so I could not have it. Fair enough. Okay. And right when he says that, um, the door opens to the office again as a very large, nine foot tall, snarling death beast walks in. Minus the snarling part. Uh, he his fur is pure snow white, and he will casually walk over, take a seat, nod to Alric before looking over at you guys, and give you a slightly less of a large nod. Well, I suppose Alexis it's a good back. thing that I did not bring my uh, other suit. Yes. And why is that? No Probably particular silvered. reason. Huh? Probably silvered. Oh no, he's got yeah, a fur suit. Pulse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I could see that causing some problems. Yeah, uh, Cody is, uh, you know, one of those suspiciously wealthy furries. <laughs> for the record i've totally decided that uh cody uh actually uh ma uses uh his magic to uh, record transformation videos and sells those as a side business a bit uh, he's got special effects that he does for movies and such. And then there's also, uh, he breeds Martins of all varieties. They live in the forest behind his house. And, uh, you know, those, uh, y you can't say what in character, Toshime? What's right above it? Oh, calling him a puppy. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, um, carrying on. Not sure if you're here, but Alexis will nod back to the werewolf. Okay. And his form will start shifting a little bit before he takes on a more normal human form. He's about late 20s. Uh, brown hair. Uh, he's wearing a t-shirt and shorts. Very just casual clothing. And he's just gonna kind of give a little salute to you guys. Acknowledge this. So have you told him anything? And Alric is going to shake his head before he nods. Well, I have some news for you guys. Me and the other tribes need your help. And we're willing to pay for it too, if that's what it need what it takes. Well, before we even discuss payment or anything, I would prefer to know what this job is. It involves, well, <laughs> I don't know how long you guys have lived here, but the end of the world. Again? Yeah, I never realized when I moved here that I was going to need to learn the uh, plural of apocalypse. What is the plural of apocalypse? Apocali. Oh, 
what is causing the end of the world this time? There are... He pauses as though he's considering it. How much do you... How much do you know about the spirit world? Uh, how much would he know? <laughs> Cody. What's your occult? Three. Two here. Uh, uh, sort of the basics that... Uh, the spirit world usually exists alongside the uh, mortal world, and there's a wall separating the two. Uh, for the record, Cody <laughs> would have... Uh, Cody would have Mardicus with him. Yes. And there are very, very dangerous and bad things over across the um, the wall. In the Umbra? Yep. Uh, well, Cody would basically say that, then. <laughs> A resplendent offering... In the Umbra. <laughs> oh. <Are you> seriously? <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Toshabe. See, I primed the pump. Yep, that was all me. Yep. No, no it wasn't Toshabe, it was all me. <laughs> um, unfortunately, the uh, donation goal has still not been completed, Kerr. We are $1 short. It says 100 on here. That's 100. <laughs> it says 100 here, too. Not, Fact yeah. check false. Fact check false. <laughs> uh, what the heckle is this? <sighs> Toshime. <laughs> Thank you, Toshime. I was just trying to pull a prank on him, though. Toshime. You're welcome. Why do you do this at the worst possible moment? <laughs> I am now trying to think of how I'm making this happen. <laughs> Fantasy Grounds is in here, is it? Yes, I see that. Hello! <laughs> well, I now have to incorporate this in. Okay. As you say that, everyone, please roll me a... Mm, let me see real quick. Perception plus awareness, please. Um, do, 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 do. Can I get back into the right window here? Perception. Difficulty seven. Oh, damn. All right, I've got... Uh, uh, I've got three checks contributing to that. So Sorry, what, what are we what rolling? <laughs> um, uh, perception plus uh, awareness, difficulty seven. So that means only sevens or higher count. All right. No, um, I can't remember how to. And if we have rules, nothing I'm... in awareness, then it's a minus one from the perception, right? Correct. Okay. Tens count as two, and I let you re-roll them. So they explode? Yep. Alright. So it's uh, D10s. It's uh, how, how many of them? I've got three uh, pips. One, one dice for every pip. So three decision. in total for me. So three in total for me, right? Yep. Uh, as long you have a point in awareness, yes. Yes. Um, okay. I have. Oh, let me find my page here. Uh, two points in perception and one point in awareness. Okay. Yep. If we're all three dice. Okay. Any dice that roll seven or higher are successes. I had one success. Okay. Cody has two successes. 
and Warren rolled three, and then Alexis has one success. I'll let Zims yeah, do I stream readers that's real that's quick before um, we continue. I mean, go <laughs> ahead and continue. I'm already running it. It doesn't need to interrupt anything. Oh, I'm not used to that. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> All of you are able to feel it before it happens. All of you are able to feel like something is wrong. That is the best way you can really put it. As the world around you seems to start to crack. Like there are literal cracks hanging in the air on the floor above you. I didn't do it before everything just shatters and suddenly you guys are falling make a willpower roll everyone what? everyone just roll your willpower how many same thing just like how many dice do you have how many pips do you have roll that many dice i think we all start with five correct unless you raise it difficulty uh, seven is normal. Generally, unless I say unless, otherwise, yeah. two will always be seven. Uh, I got a ten there, so that yeah, roll that again, right? Yep, and tens count as two. And one subtract one success? Correct. Right. And Oof. the difficulty on this is? Always seven, unless I say otherwise. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I am the rock. I am the stone in the storm. <laughs> so who has spirit magic? I'm I'm so glad that I invested that extra pip in willpower. <laughs> I believe the person who has spirit magic is the person who's currently not here right now because we don't know where he is. No, okay. I don't have spirit at all. <laughs> Moriarty, where are you? <clears throat> As you guys for our intrepid um let me double check this real quick. Cody and Alexis, you guys hit the ground, dazed but conscious. You guys are struggling a little bit, though, with the sudden jerk from reality into, well, wherever you are right now. Warren oh. and our other dear friend, you guys basically superhero landing this shit and literally are ready to go, no problems whatsoever. Oh, you all are here, so this isn't a flashback, thank god. I'm just waiting for Domino to pop out. <laughs> you know how to summon him. The werewolf who is with you is also there, and he has shifted. He has taken on that nine-foot-tall snarling death beast form again. And he looks worried um around you is almost beauty it's like you guys are on an asteroid hanging in the middle of space and around you guys you can see what look like bridges made of the finest silk moving out from this asteroid to other ones. And each one is inscribed with sigils and runes, each one glowing with... It's hard to describe. There's almost not a word for the color it is. It's not like anything you have ever seen in the mortal side of things. Duke. Green. Oh, 
Also, we now have a Martin. What am I? Chopped liver? I've been here the whole time. Super adorable Martin on screen. He has... Is that an oh, egg so or a ball? That egg. is an egg. I thought that was an egg. It's cute. Yes, that is Buddy the Sable. For those that are new here, uh, we are very... Uh, we, we promote Martins a lot because not many people know about them. And especially in the case of Sables, like the one that was just on the screen... The, the few people that do know about them are typically, they know about sable fur coats, and I'd like to change that at least a little bit. And so I promote Martins heavily and spread their adorableness to everybody. They're like Russian weasels. Not that inaccurate, I guess. Um, Not just in Russia, sables. but yeah. yeah. I've got over 350 Martin videos that can be brought up, uh, r random ones, uh, every minute. Duke. And they do <laughs> like to snuggle. They are highly intelligent little critters. Like, uh, this one here, this little sable is, uh, doing its best to tuck its toy into bed. That is adorable. <laughs> I like he's trying to suffocate it. No. <laughs> Just saying. The head is poking <laughs> out underneath from underneath the blankets. Well, rather and in a dollhouse, no less. That's awesome. Poking out uh, <laughs> from under the pillow, but you know, same difference. And so. As you guys are able to take in your surroundings, make me a perception. Let's do awareness roll this time. Perception and awareness. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what you Unless... did the last time. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. Um, Unless someone wants to see through their sphere. Yes, you can use your sphere somehow if you would like. Well, uh, we're on a, uh, you said you're on a floating asteroid. That's like a... That's what it looks like to your guys' senses, at least. There's breathable air, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, any sort of life? Or it's just barren rock? Uh, that's what you're rolling for. Well, then I would like to use my life sphere to assist the roll, because I've got three in that. All right, roll your air type then, instead. That is also three. Okay. Oh, wait, so tens count me... as two? Yes, and ah, you reroll okay. them. That gives me six total. Oh, no, no, just just roll your arate, just your arate. Just the arate, oh, okay. Yep, because you're doing a magic effect. Oh. The, di the difficulty for this roll is only four here. Oh. Well, I only for got for a magic, one anyway. For magic. For magic. Because if, if you roll a one, that subtracts one of your successes, right? But you did bot. get one success, which is enough for this. How are you doing it? Uh, how, how am I performing it? Mm -hmm. Well, I pull out the lipstick that I was so I was so politely reminded to bring. And I uh, draw out a, draw out a uh, detection sigil on the, on the ground in front of me to detect any... Uh, any life nearby, any in, anything intelligent, anything, you know, anything, anything that's above pond scum. <laughs> okay. All right. So, Cody, Warren, and um, you rolled the one success, Alexis. Yes. Okay. Um, you guys, all three of you, are able to hear howls go up. Um, and these howls are twisted, like, they send shivers down your spine, and for you, oh, Portia... Oh, so spooky, scary skeletons? Yes. <laughs> yes, I they are. I had to make the joke when you said that. Um, 
as you begin to draw out the rune and will it into life, about a half dozen sensations bombard you from the sigil. You can feel them. These lives are wrong, though. These are bodies that should not exist. They should be dead, and yet somehow are still alive. Okay, so if any of you knows where the nearest door is at, um, a whole lot of nope is in the general proximity. Um, make a... Anyone who has it can make a cosmology plus intelligence roll for this. Um, if you have no points in oh something, boy. that deducts one, right? Um, correct. That My time to shine. shine. No, I have a total of four dice in this. Holy Alexis, how many dice do you have for this? Intelligence five, cosmology three. <sighs> Let's, I have nothing just to keep this a little stuff. bit more uh, clear, let's start doing, uh, you know, in plus Cosmo and then the number of successes. All right. Keep it a little easier to see for uh, Kerr. Okay. Botch. Womp womp. Warren, you are absolutely positive that you guys are at um, somewhere in Disney World in its space exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you said four what was the cutoff for this? Uh, difficulty for this one is going to be seven, unless I state otherwise. Yeah. You got one success. Yep. Um, for you, Portia, you know, you you realize this must be the spirit world, but you have no idea anything else. You, you know, like okay, spirit world. I'm not a hundred percent sure exactly where or how we got here, but yes. Uh, for Cody and Alexis, however. You guys are going to realize that where you are with that roll, this is the Deep Umbra. This is Crap. very difficult to get to. It is also normally very dangerous to go to. There are rifts, portals, and gateways to other parts of the Umbra here. And this is where reality so stops being reality and starts being, well, yes. Right now, it seems to have taken on a more space-like visage. Though you guys would realize that that can change at a moment's notice. Um, normally... How uh, this type of area would work is a mage would come here, build a sanctum, and basically rivet down the reality of this place in order to ensure that it stays that way and doesn't suddenly just turn into a cookie. A very powerful cookie, though. Just saying. Uh-oh. Oh, sorry. Already left. Oh, okay. already, already in time I moved him down to the timeout since he's not here. Maybe it'll make him aware. I don't know. I actually thought that you'd throw me in the well for the powerful cookie <laughs> comment. Oh, good point. <laughs> I will wait. Okay. For you guys, normally getting here is something that would take a master mage to get you here. Especially with how difficult it is to get into the umbra nowadays ever since about 10 years ago the umbra the spirit wall between the umbra the spirit world and the living world has been almost impossible to get through it's called the storm wall now 
and those who try to pass through it, who try to pass through the gauntlet without protection, are normally attacked and assaulted by thousands upon thousands of tiny shards like glass that attempt to rip into your very soul. That didn't happen, though, for you guys when you came through here. That shouldn't have been possible. And yet, here you are. Normally, when you come through the spirit world, which you guys have done a couple of times before, with Reinhardt's help, you're going to end up in the area of basically where you left. So, if you leave on Cody's grounds, which is probably the safest place for you guys to do so, you would end up in the spirit world of Cody's house in the spirit world, which would be basically a direct reflection of his home, but more... How shall I put it for your guys' sake? It's more the events that happened in that location show on the area. If you guys passed a, pl uh, passed a home in the spirit world where a murder happened, you might see blood covering the walls and skulls hanging off the windows. In a place that is good and filled with hope, you might see the walls clean and beautiful and very well taken care of, and it might even give off a soft glow of light. The spirit world is very much a reflection of the natural world, but as you go deeper and deeper into it, it starts getting more and more less defined and more dangerous. However, you guys would also know your magic here is much easier to use and much safer to use so far away from reality. So great. How have we wound up in this place, and how do we get back? Well, the haunted mansion looks more interesting. And you guys what are you also talking about. Aren't we in Disney World? No, we are in the Umbra, the deep Umbra, to be precise. And we need to run. Right now, says the werewolf, who is very much, he has reached into space and dragged a claw down and opened a small rift that he has reached through, and he has drawn out a sword about his size. I take it from your reaction, this wasn't part of the meeting. No, this is what I was trying to uh, ask you guys about. We need to run, because something wants you all dead very, very much, and they just sent someone to do it. By all means, after you. I don't know my way around here. Um, as you say that, you can see a pack of creatures about three asteroids away. They are... Mm, um... These are not natural creatures. That one looks like a snake with three heads on the body of a shark. And yet it has eight, nine legs coming out of it. Venom is dripping off of its maws and literally searing into the asteroid as it's running. Or galloping. Or twitching. It's difficult. Looking at it is not very fun to do. It's approaching. Well, aren't you a new and fascinating addition to the universe? Uh, the other about half dozen creatures are very much along in the same boat. Twisted. Wrong. They shouldn't exist here. And one of them, for example, looks like a polar bear upside down with tentacles coming out of its chest and about four maws on each of its limbs, snapping with tongues coming out that are now stabbing into the earth as it's moving and leaving, oh, you know, about inch wide divots in solid stone. These do not look pleasant creatures at all. 
And you may make an occult plus intelligence roll in order to identify them if you wish. All right, I'll do that. That would be six for me. I'm going to put this one at difficulty six for you guys. As they're identifying it, I'm going to start slamming my staff down to start using three quintessence to lower the difficulty. Um, Alexis, could you not? <laughs> taking what? quintessence from them. Gotta get rid of those ones. Uh, the difficulty is already going to be four here, this far out. Oh, it's four? Four. Oh. It's four? For, for, for magic, for magic. Oh, I was about to say. Oh, Sorry, okay. difficulty six for the intelligence roll. Gotcha. So I, I'll just let, use let me, let, Okay, let me do their rolls first, and then I will do yours. Okay. I think I counted that up right. Hang on. Uh, Portia, you are able to identify these are Bane spirits. Um, spirits of corruption and servants of a being that werewolves call the worm. They are beings. How, 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 how did I succeed? Now, one success to end with the two botches in there. How? Basic knowledge. Okay. You have a really big library, so very basic information you would probably have access to, thanks to how big your guys' library is. Um, a big library. It's a very big library. You guys put a lot of points into it. Uh, Cody, with your int plus a cult roll. Note, your library would normally add its bonus to your roll if you are able to use it, just to let you guys know for future reference. Um, your, your role allows you to know specifically these are Bane spirits that are possessing these, pe uh, people. These things are in people right now and possessing them this far out. They're using the bodies as basically a way to manifest themselves in a place that normally would not let them. This place is far, far out of their wheelhouse for them to be here. Which means they were likely pulled in the same way you guys were. Because a Bane Spirit that is possessing someone would have been in the mortal world, not out in the Umbra. And Alexis, you can identify these Bane Spirits basically by name. With that role. <laughs> Frank, what are you There's doing specific here? specific ones. Interesting, okay. Like, e each Bane Spirit has its own unique name, and uh, knowing those names can give you power over them with the right tools and magic. Nice. But you don't have spirit magic, so it doesn't really help much. But he could work with you. Uh, actually, I can tell you this, Warren, because you are an Order of Hermes member. They specialize in these types of things. Uh, Warren, you do know that you could work together with someone in order to attempt to bind and trap spirits, especially if one knows their true name. The caster themselves do not need to know it so long as someone who is assisting in the ritual knows it. Wait, so, so that you don't need to have spirit magic, but just the... Um, could we work together, but, or...? So... With my um, prime, I can trap. Yes, to, to, to put this into ways, mages can work together to do things that they themselves could not do alone. Um, you knowing the true names of these creatures with that freaking eight successes <laughs> um, would allow Toshime to attempt to bind them. If he so chose, and Toshime 
would know this because the Order of Hermes specializes in spirit binding and using spirits this way. Nice. This is literally how they do it. So it would work well, very well within their paradigm that he could do this no problem and I wouldn't make him roll or anything because he would already know this because this is how he would have been trained to do it. So Alexis is just gonna is gonna stand up, dust himself off, notice the Bane spirits, and just kind of like nudge Toshime. I'm sorry, nudge. Um, who are you, Toshime? Portia. Warren. Warren. Okay, my bad. Nudge Warren, and kind of. Well, hang on. I don't think if if it'd be better to try to uh, make them stop by calling out their names or just. Uh, no, yeah, I'll I'll just point at each one of them and, and speak loud enough for them to hear and name them one by one. Okay. And are you going to use your any of your spheres to help with this? Your Erte? I mean I th who I mean I, I thought there was mostly you doing the, the legwork. To uh, assist. Uh, hang on a second. Give me a moment. Um could you send me your hang on, let me see if I have it real quick. <laughs> Give me a second. I am hunting. Where is it? Character sheet? Yes, your character sheet. Uh, send it to you in DM. That's what I thought. I am going to look real quick. I have so many. I have so many. Yeah, here. understandable. At the top now. Ah, thank you. Mm hmm. Boop. Let me double check this real quick so I can offer help because mage can be difficult. Um, you could use yeah. a forces effect to create a circle of fire to try to bind them, to create a circle. A circle they would not be able to cross with Toshime's magic working together with it. Would I put that circle around us as a shield? You could do that as well if you wanted. I think to give us some time, that's that's what that's what I'll do. You could also use time magic as well. Speaking of that, I mean, there's there is there any risk of paradox here? There's no witnesses. Uh, so. Very low. low. No. You, you guys are so far away from reality that it's, it's kind of expected. Kind of what, yeah. Like, <laughs> gotcha. Here, you guys can go nuts. Nice. Unless okay. you're this far out, you guys can go nuts without really that much fear of paradox, unless, like, you made a sun implode. A sudden what? A, a sun implode oh, on itself. Okay. Gotcha. Well, in that case, um, I'll do as you suggest and create a uh, shield of flame around us, and at how the same are you time, doing so yes. No, no. How are you? Doing oh, how? Yes. Um, let me think. That that's the thing about mage is right. How do you go about right. doing it? Um, how do will? Uh, how does uh willpower and quintessence work for uh, potentially boosting spells? Um, you can spend a point of willpower in order to either re-roll a dice roll or to get one free automatic success. You can use up, uh, you can spend as many quintessence as you wish up to your avatar level and how many points of quintessence you actually have stored within you. Um, and every point of quintessence you spend can either act as one automatic success or lower the difficulty of the roll by one. Does it have to be a shield of flame? Uh, not necessarily. I just said that because of forces. It can be whatever you would like it to be. Oh, okay, but I couldn't... The spheres. Okay. So I couldn't, for instance, create a wall of stone by stretching the stone up from the asteroid we're on. That would be a matter of fact. That's what I figured. Uh, now you could have um, your third mage help you out with that by carving in the sigils of the ritual onto the asteroid that you then power with um, your forces magic. 
I I'm trying to help you guys out here because mage can yeah. be so t difficult. You yeah, guys all work uh, together on this. Or forces you could stop them in their tracks with no friction. Yep. Well, I, I was kind of thinking of putting a time bubble around us as well to speed up time that. for us. Yeah, let me, let's yeah. see. That sounds easier. So. I could assist with that. I've got two points in time. Okay. I got I got three. So we're. Com I guess we can combine. How do you guys do it, though, in a way that you guys can combine together? What's your focus? Cool. What's your focus for time magic? Um, well, that, that was actually, I, I wasn't sure if I was able to do this or not. I was going to have a gem on my torque, my phylactery torque. Okay. Um, so one of, one of the gems would start glowing as I kind of, how can I word this? I, I create, I create a bubble around the group and, and essentially within that bubble, it's just as if time starts to slip by faster and it's it's like everything around us is suddenly like enmeshed in molasses well um, my focus for time is a pocket watch as that pocket watch is existing inside that bubble then that means that i'm just able to i, I would just uh use have the watch accelerate further from its reference point inside that bubble like when you're walking on the uh mo moving sidewalks at the airport Okay, I will, I will allow you guys. That works perfectly. I will rule that you guys are able to do that, and you may both make Arite rolls. Difficulty three, since you guys are working together, I will lower the difficulty by one more. Damn it! And now my dice family. Um, you may spend a point of willpower if you wish to re-roll. Yeah, re -roll I think all I... of them or a specific dice. Uh, you re-roll all of them. It's a brand new roll. That's better. Oh, only just. What are we attempting to do here? Magic. Yep. Well, thank you, Toshime, <laughs> but I was meaning specifically. We're creating a bubble of fast time around us so okay. that all the it. time for those critters passes slower than what's passing inside the bubble. Okay. It was... Give us time to, you know, charge up our Kamehameha beam so that was by yeah, time we could figure out our plan. <laughs> I kind of got lost with the time thing because I was like, are we trying to control them? What does time have to do with this? <laughs> nope, you just giving, you're just giving us <laughs> some time. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're buying time so you can build up a massive ritual. So, real quick, I just want to tell you guys a quick story that you guys might enjoy because you're kind of bringing memories of that back. <laughs> Um, real um, quick, I do want to say we have a redemption for a re-roll. Uh, community re-roll. Oh. For whom? Community. All, both of us? Oh. Uh, yeah. One re So basically, uh, with this game, I think we'll just do... You can choose to re-roll a particular die. Or, well, I mean... Oh, no, this game, this game is... The all the whole dice roll if it's re-roll. Yeah, we'll just do a full if you choose to use it. It's uh, all your dice get re-rolled, but. Yep. Well, I think since we did okay, can we reserve it? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's okay. the point of it. Uh, they when okay. a redemption is yep. made for a yeah, re-roll, you we get to. It's just we all have to agree to that it. this is when yeah, it's going to be used, or rather, majority. the audience. Re the audience re-roll roll works like an inspiration point, but but for the whole group. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, the oh, little story I to like you. a uh, point of luck, rather, where you get to... Oh, yeah, fair enough. But go ahead, Kerr. So, um, I made a mini-boss. It was like 12 sessions into the game. This was a mini-boss. He was a Nephondic mage who had constantly vexed and annoyed the party and had been trying to screw with them. And they were getting ready to throw down and finally end things once and for all. The mages, um, one of them cloaked them from sight and they were able to get the drop on him. One mage slowed time for him. Another mage hit him with a binding so he could not use magic with... Um, prime magic a uh, third mage caused a massive explosion to go up beneath his feet 
and a fourth mage locked down the space to ensure he could not get out of it when the explosion went off and all of it was centered on his body. Nice. And this was all in one turn. They all <laughs> took their turn beforehand and they all basically said, this is what we're doing. <laughs> and they arranged things to basically go, okay, this is how we're doing it. They had worked together so much at this point. And they proceeded to one-shot the boss. Nice. Working together with this. <laughs> it's like... So, what, what I'm trying, kind of, trying to, to hint at you guys to do, and this is something all of your characters would have been taught to, is when you guys work together to overcome each other's um, faults and failings, what you guys cannot do, and then work together, you guys can do way more, especially if you have time to prepare. If you want, if you go against a mage who has time to prepare and knows you're coming after them, it's not usually going to end well for you. Mm. So how anyway. how how quick can we can I move time, or how how rapidly can we speed ourselves up? Um, basically, you would get three turns for every turn they get. Okay. We got plenty of time then. Mm-hmm. But yes, like as, as you guys are able to do this, oh. a glowing sphere of power basically surrounds you guys. And everything outside of this bubble basically looks like it's almost stopped. It's moving almost imperceptibly. What would have taken them like 10 or 20 seconds to reach you now looks like it'll take at least minutes to get to you. Right then. Alexis? Do, do drugs work on these things? I'm not sure I'm the right one to ask. Am I? I, I guess, yeah, I guess it would be. Um, yeah, no. Very, um, it would have worked on their human hosts, but not them. But they are... In their true form. Okay, so even though they're inhabiting human hosts, it wouldn't affect them. They're not yeah. human hosts. Not, not anymore right now. They're fully manifested. Okay. I think the best plan might be to try to bind them. With, um... Let's see. What, uh, what was it? The, the, yeah, Prime, sorry. Um, so we we have their names. Mm -hmm. And I'll once again kind of poke at each one of them, or, you know, point at each one, from each one of them and name them. How many are there? Uh, half dozen, six. Six, okay. How long would it take us to bind one of them? It depends on how much, how like fancy you want the bindings and how well you guys work together to do it. And this bubble of time is static, correct? Yes. Unless you focused before you did the spell on something that it could follow you with, or you could carry, then it's static. Okay. So it sounds like we can probably take care of three of them, because it would only take them one turn to get to us, is that correct? You can attempt a group binding as well. Oh. Well, that sounds intriguing. Go on. A group binding would be more difficult, because you're going to be trying to bind more of them at the exact same time. But it's possible to do so. You have their true names, which is going to make things much easier to do than it normally would be. And you do have a whole group of mages here working who could work together to help you. Toshime would likely be the leader of the uh, ritual, but it's something you guys could attempt to do if you wished. And, we, and if we failed, would that only take one turn? It depends on how many turns you guys want to take doing it. Hmm. I say that because you guys could do take turns in order to set things up to try to get more bonuses to basically take the time to like set up a ritual circle to set up flames and candles and the like using matter to make it easier. Okay. It depends on how much effort you want to go into the binding spell, basically. Well, I'd, I'd say a sufficient amount of effort to get them bound. <laughs> Because the more time we take, the more successes we can draw. 
Mm -hmm. And the right. easier it will be. It's just if you somehow fail, well, you're probably going to have a lot of angry spirits right, right next to you. Well, they're already angry, so that you know, it's. <laughs> you did buy yourselves a lot of time to work. You guys probably have about twelve turns to work with. Well, oh, I can... wow! Okay. It would have taken them between about three to four turns. I uh, checked on my end without telling you guys, but you guys probably have about 11 to 12 turns to do this. I may be able to assist with aiming by drawing them together. I could I could write out a sigil for life and attraction and see if, see if that has any effect on them. And I'm I going to it. get out a piece of chalk and start drawing the sigils out. Okay. Um, they, you would know, um, Portia, that they are within mortal hosts, therefore they are bound by life magic as well. Normally a spirit would only be affected by spirit magic, because they wouldn't have a physical body. Even in the spirit world, there'd be spirit and soul, not, not physical mass. Here, though, they are in physical bodies, meaning you can affect them. So then, yeah, I'll begin drawing a, a, uh, a well, or a, sorry, a, uh, siphon. To tr to pull them in towards whatever trap we're setting up. Okay. I, I will bring up my the appropriate uh, apps on my wrist computer uh, in order to uh, correspondence and entropy uh, entropy to give us a little bit of a uh, extra boost, a bit of luck towards uh, achieving this, and correspondence for some extra range on it of working. Uh, okay. As well as buying, uh, you know, uh, you know, using it to kind of split it into all of them. Okay, so what you would be able to do then is basically make the roll a little bit easier, as well as cause Porsche's sigil to appear under them to draw them all together when they are not right in front of you. Works for me. That would be much useful, yeah. Yes. Also, I will allow you to use that correspondence spell if you succeed in order to um, affect all of the ritual items that you guys are setting up. So you can do the ritual here and then basically throw it at them. Nice. And cause it to appear around them. Ready the artillery! Correspondence magic is so no. useful! I, I do have a quick <laughs> question. Um, yes. Uh, uh, well, kind of a comment. Uh, I'm assuming, c correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, we don't have cell signal here, do we? Probably what not. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is but why I have... wanted the, the, you know, use correspondence to talk to Bob when we need to. I mean, you could just use correspondence to talk to Bob, too. Yeah, you, you can, can use correspondence on your phone to get through. Cody, I know it's scary, but you can't call your mom. Watch out no. for those interdimensional uh, roaming rates, by the way. Oh, God. <laughs> we get back cell to phone the company real... sees this. Yeah, cell phone company sees this call coming in from... What is that? Pluto. Is that a word? That... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some, some sort of alien script that wasn't in their system yet somehow made it onto your cell phone bill. <laughs> The technocracy would like to speak to you. <laughs> the technocracy will remember this. Forget to, uh, forget international calling charges. We're going yeah. interdimensional, baby. <laughs> yeah, we got a problem. <laughs> All right. So I think. So what what exactly is behind the binding itself? Like what with my forces and time, what exactly could I do to contribute to? Fire is considered a cleansing force. It is ah. dangerous to them, and especially if Warren uses a bit of Prime in order to amplify it, it would be extremely deadly to them. Oh, it is okay. not something that they could be able to easily cross. All right, so could I pull a thread of fire from my gem? Yes. You, okay. have, for you have forces three, correct? Yes. Yes, you can create fire from that gem. Okay. Um, I'm going to be back in a bit i'll be on uh, i'll message you on discord Kerr. okay okay so we're gonna i'm gonna i guess pull out a glob of fire and hold it between my hands and i guess 
kind of fuse it in with the with the glyphs. Yes, you could do like that. A, like a fire trap, so it when it goes gets under them, it cut suddenly ignites and creates a column of fire around them. Yep. Yep, and it could be even the shape of the sigils. So the sigils are actually burning upwards. Sounds like a plan to me. Yeah, you could do that. So let's have an Arite roll from all of you. All right. Um, now, which is it? Is it willpower or quintessence to add an additional dice? Um, you right. could use either one, oh, yeah. technically. Right. Um, I will burn one quintessence then. Difficulty. You can choose to lower the difficulty or increase yeah. your dice pool. Isn't the Increasing difficulty only pool. three? Uh, the difficulty for you guys, for specifically Toshime, and wow, I keep using your actual name instead of the name. Uh, the difficulty for Alexis and Warren is going to be three. The difficulty for Portia and Cody will be four. Unless you let Cody go first. Oh, I'll let Cody go first if it brings that difficulty down. All right. I Cody has to uh, be right back, so he has given me permission to roll for him. So oh I my will God. roll for and him. And when I dropped the dice outside of the window, there's three sevens and a four. Oh. <laughs> All right, let me roll. Uh, Cody has three successes, so nice. uh, the difficulty will lower by one for all of you here. Oh, okay. But ones are still botches, right? Yeah, ones will still take away. Damn. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I would like would to use, if, if no one has an objection, I would like to use that reroll. The Go community ahead. reroll? Yeah. I think. Like all of us reroll? No, just Portia. Otherwise, she's going to botch and horrible things are going to happen. Yeah, well, I only got one, so I'm not sure if I should spend another willpower. One probably... success is enough for this. Okay. One success is enough to trigger the uh, magical effect. Nice. No, oh, come on. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, you roll roll better with your last one. <laughs> please, please. You got it. Okay. Okay, oh you're good. God. Oh my god. <laughs> you're good. That's okay, you're okay. Still two successes. <laughs> is Sunai in the audience? Is Sunai right, watching? <laughs> Normally this effect would be a difficulty 10 roll. To try to do, but yeah. since you know the true names of each one, that lowers the difficulty by one for each. And we're in quick time. Um, and then with the uh, Cody's magic, it's going to make the difficulty even easier. Nice. Especially being out here. Normally to do this type of magic in the mortal world, we would start with the difficulty 10. Nice. Or sorry, with the difficulty 7. And then increase it from there. But yeah, being plus all the paradox and all that. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. So yes, all of your guys' magical effects will activate. Nice. Thank you, As Sirio. All, <laughs> all of the creatures are suddenly pulled together by Portia's um, uh, sigil she carved in the ground. That is suddenly under them, thanks to Cody, actually casually just tapping on his computer, causing the earth between the sigil and where they are to swap places. Nice. Uh, your flames burst up along the runes that uh, Warren carved and forms a binding ring around them. As Warren is using his prime magic to attempt to bind the creatures as you can see them basically being forced to stop within the circle. Yes, Sirio, it was useful. It saved me from villainous dice. Should have yeah, you don't ever want to botch a magic roll. Botching a magic roll, really bad things happen then. If we had somebody who had spirit, we could find out who's commanding them. Moriarty! <laughs> it's like, I gave Moriarty an extra dice to have three in spirit just because I knew this was going to be a heavy spirit game. And it's like... Uh... The most important person here right now isn't here. I think we did pretty, pretty well without him. I think you guys did very well without him. 
and oh. the binding Tosh or uh, Warren you can feel has taken effect. These creatures are trapped within that circle. They ain't going anywhere. Hey, Fluffy. Don't suppose you could run the license plates on those, could you? Look, looking over at the werewolf. Fluffy. Do we get his name? No, My name is Winter did. Song. Mm. No, I never asked. Song. We didn't have time. He's just kind of staring at all this before he kind of looks at you. I had my doubts about a bunch of mages being any being of any help in the coming dangers, but seeing you capture so many powerful bane spirits so easily, my apologies for that. Think nothing of it. As he just kind of casually just sheathed the giant sword across his back. He's kind of looking at them. He looks at the, the giant polar bear-like thing. That is one of the spirits of Haken. Was this um, related to the trouble you were looking for help with? Yes. I, you all may make a knowledge plus... Uh, Esoterica roll, please. A knowledge? What's knowledge? Intelligence? From, or, sorry, intelligence. Sorry. Okay. Intelligence plus what? Uh, Esoterica. Esoterica. Oh, boy. <laughs> I get seven dice for this one. Hey, same here. As someone rolls ten successes and I go cry in a corner. <laughs> Get that one out of... <laughs> you get a roll of ten again. Yeah, What? what's the difficulty? Six. Oi. Oh, <laughs> I want new dice. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I rolling so many ones? I don't understand. Did six was the difficulty? Uh... Okay, this one, one is two, fairly well known. Three, four, five, four, three. That is a very good roll, Alexis. Thank you. Knowledge is my thing. Okay. I'm, I'm it's gonna Japanese stop doing werewolf. dice rolls and hide in the corner. <laughs> I am. I am cursed. Too bad. Could be worse. So, Let me roll for Zim's real quick. Okay. So you guys would all know that uh, this is uh, Hakaken is its name is a servant of the worm a very very powerful dark spirit he tends to appear as actually hang on i can share the image i will share his image in um the the, the table polar bear, the polar bear was a servant of them servant of his yes okay that's what he looks like. I just shared the image. It looks like he would taste good with butter and lemon. He is a ty Tyrannosaurus crab hybrid. Mm, he used to be. He used to be a werewolf. He used to be a werewolf of the Shadow Lord's tribe before he was corrupted by his pride and is now a very powerful spirit of the worm. Um, he serves the being known as Phobok, the Urge of Fear. 
one of the 12, basically you could almost call them heads of the worm, each one devoted to his particular emotion. Phobok is fear and terror. So you're saying it's capable of feeling fear. Good to know. Oh, it, uh, Phobok's ban for any who follow him, they must instill fear in their foes before they are allowed to kill them. It uses paranoia and phobias in order to cause fear and madness in its victims. So wait, ha, uh, go over that that again. He he's a he's a servant of Hakaken. Oh no, he's a servant of the worm. Oh, yes, correct. That is correct. And we're and what's Phobok? Phobok is one of the twelve heads of the worm. He is specifically tied to the emotion of fear, terror, paranoia, and madness. Okay, and where, where does how does he? He's basically he at the top of the food chain. Phobok is the top of the food chain, one of the twelve. The okay, main twelve. So, Hakaken is the servant of Phobok. Yes, he is basically okay, his direct okay. servant. Gotcha. Okay. Hakaken is his number two. Hakaken is the one who actually like interacts with physical things. Yeah, Phobok sure. usually does not. Phobok is literally like fear and terror incarnate. Hakaken is his main servant. He is the one most tied to Phobok. If something happened to Hakaken, it would severely damage uh, Phobok. The issue is doing that to Hakaken. Right. Yeah, see, here's the thing. All we really need is like five gallons of butter and a boiling pond, and we're good to go. I think so, yeah. <laughs> I can provide the boiling part. <laughs> um, so, in the name of the actual critter? Um, Aurelis. Unpronounceable? Aurelis, okay. A Aurelis. Okie dokie. It is an upper level spirit, but otherwise nothing like super special. Oh, unfortunately I do have to go in about 10 minutes. Yeah, it is almost five, which actually would be the end of the session. Yep. So, we're currently stranded in the Umbra with a bunch of assassins locked inside a sigil, or locked inside a trap. Mm -hmm. And we have no idea how to get back to reality. Yep. Super. Basically. Well, because these are Bane spirits, I can make them into bad... <laughs> Make them into. Open my character sheet real quick. How long does the sigil last? Uh, it'll last as long as you guys are basically around here. Oh, good. Okay. I can Even make that a we can't go anywhere. Ooh, that would be useful. Wait, Depend you, can, you can siphon the the spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> Juice them. Juice them up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the only that thing might is, be the most efficient way of handling it. <laughs> it's that, or wait for our spirit friend to be able to figure out where they came from, who they came from. Yeah, that would be the perfect solution. Wow, we really are outside reality. We're fucked. <laughs> Did you hear that, Kerr? Yes. Okay, just checking. <laughs> I, I had to test. Perfect opportunity. I'm back. Yeah, Sorry about that. Here right now. You're good. <laughs> um, we were successful. I was listening, at least. Um, okay. I I have actually had a bit of a question. Uh, how is my familiar doing? How's Marticus? hissing at these things 
Okay. So, Amarticus, would you like to, uh, if we can turn them into pure quintessence, are, are you hungry, Marticus? No. <laughs> this is not the good type. It would basically be stored in my staff. Oh. This stuff would be like nuclear waste. <laughs> okay, so I assume that I would have known that. Okay. I say you soak up as much as you can discharge all the rest just completely annihilate them so that they can't go back to whoever sent them hey uh could i get a perception plus alertness roll from everyone please oh boy there we go oh boy mm -hmm. oh boy let's watch me roll a one again <laughs> difficulty seven and there it is it is now five rolls in a row, which each produced a one. You, I am you've, cursed. You have not appealed to the uh, machine spirits. And how would I do that? You must Difficulty make offerings seven. to me. Yes. I must what? Make offerings to me and my gloriousness as the storyteller. Uh, I will I can point give you out Doritos that Doritos Mountain Dew. I, I will point out that Tanya is. Uh, did donate to the uh, game, so, you know. Obviously, it was not enough. <laughs> I see. These blessings don't come cheap. Don't come cheap. I, I, okay, I, I, instead, I, I, I will I, point out that Toshime donated to the game. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen the roll he rolled earlier. The fucking, fucking five rolls in a row each produced a one i'm kind of afraid to do ascent to ascend i might get the party killed as you guys um are talking and discussing things you you cody specifically just you hear <laughs> the sounds of engines above you before a giant, basically, stream of red light lances over your heads towards where these creatures are bound in the flaming circle and vaporizes them. Was easy? I mean, that works. Now, was that is that rescue showing up, or was that the master making sure that we couldn't interrogate them? Or was that the what? werewolf helping? Uh, no, as when you guys turn around, there is a massive starship flying towards you. And as it comes to a land right uh, about 30 feet in front of you, there is a hiss as a stairwell comes down and a door slides open. And I kid you not, what looks to be a man in power armor starts walking out completely enclosed in the armor and with a very large gun in one arm one hand well, I, well we here, appreciate the rescue no, what in I'm, one hand a very large gun a rifle this is right, the technocracy yeah i'm sorry i thought you were done and you hear his voice crackling over basically like an intercom within his armor from his helmet that was pretty good dealing with those aliens, I gotta say. you just not wearing any protective gear in pure vacuum, and... Oh, you're... Hmm. You're with that one. As he's looking at the werewolf. Okay. You guys are them. Gotcha. Okay. Well, if you want to come on board, we can help you out. I don't want to let, leave you stranded out here in this asteroid field. I'm still not joining the technocracy. <sighs> don't worry, the Void Seeker will be fine. Let's go on in. Don't really have any other options, so might as well. I suppose so, indeed. Well, I'm going to have some serious uh, words with... Oh. Insert name, Alric. 
Yep. I'm going to have some serious words with Alric when we get back. After all, we were pr promised safety, and this is definitely not it. So you guys would know, this is general knowledge, especially here for you guys. The Void Engineers, as they are called, um, basically are the members of the technocracy least likely to kill you guys on site. All they care about is exploring the spirit world, or as they call it, the deep universe. They see the spirit world basically as planets, solar systems, asteroid belts, and super deep space travel. And that's what they do. It's just hyperspace to them. Yeah. They have like they have full on space marines. They have full on think Star Wars, Star Trek, they have those ships. Cool. And they build that like regularly. They have massive um colonies on other planets, aka in the spirit world in different realms. They have full on um Shipyards, they have um, floating space colonies that they use, outposts. Like, these guys are the masters of the spirit world when it comes to the technocracy. And to them, they don't really give a shit about mages. Like, sure, they cause trouble and such, but this far out, eh, really not that big a deal. With the dangers and the and the aliens that you guys have to deal with on a daily basis out here, and how dangerous it can be, they'll take any help they can get, and they're willing to give help too. When they're giving it. Actually, on that note, um, the last thing I would like to do for the end of the session here mm -hmm. is uh, just tell them I don't like living in anyone's debt, and I do very much appreciate the rescue. So. If you're willing to accept it, whatever medicines you're lowest on, give me a list, and I'll see that they're delivered to the Sixth Circle so that you could have a representative pick them up. Nice. He will nod. Come on board. We can find out how you're doing. You're doing a way out here, and see about helping you get back. Much obliged, good sir. End of session. Yay. Well, luckily, we've got four people here for the uh, next session. <laughs> oh, oh we've got there Timber. you That's are, like Moriarty. Where the... Oh, there he goes. And he left again. <laughs> I moved him. Why did you move him up? To see if that activation would get him awake. Oh. Why, yeah, that's my only assumption, like that? is that he fell asleep. I mean, I'm pretty tired myself, but that's why I've got a big mug of coffee. So, did you guys enjoy our little sessions today? Yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah. I thought I did an interesting spot to donate. Yeah, see, see, my plan? I kind of thought you guys were going to run from the giant deadly spirits of deadliness. Yeah, screw that. I've and then you guys went, no, nope, we're just going to catch them and then find out about them and then learn things you guys weren't really going to learn about for a while yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's mage. Yep, I'm used to that kind of thing usually happening. And I am so glad that I uh, had that cup of coffee. <laughs> well, thanks for running the game. Because that, that coffee maker was the only reason why I had any quintessence to burn in the first place. <laughs> Not a problem. I will see you guys all next week and prepare for more insanity. Yay. Insanity's fun. Indeed. I have a good one, guys. I got to I gotta head out to a brewery with company. Alright. All right, see you. Yeah. Bye folks. Uh, we'll run Stream Raiders when we're back with uh Ascend to Ascend. Uh, Curb, that was actually, uh, Mage, uh, one of the World of Darkness, uh, games, tabletop, uh, systems. Uh, we are going to be moving to D&D &D in just a moment, though.
I always feel the need to specify that it's one of the uh, World of Darkness games because Mage is just such a generic term. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I fear nobody will have any idea what I'm talking about otherwise. <laughs> Mage, 20th anniversary. <laughs> yeah, but that still is generic as hell. Anyways... Thank you all so much for joining us for our first session of Horizon Lost Mage World of Darkness. I will be back in just a few minutes with Ascent to Ascend, Dungeons and Dragons. Check out our website, zgfgaming.com. We've got links for our Discord, Telegram, Twitter, Patreon, all those things there on the website as well as down in the description below. Thank you to my patrons, donators, and subscribers. It is because of your support that I'm able to continue bringing these streams to you all. I really cannot do it without you guys. Consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash zgfgaming. It's one of the best ways to support the channel, though you can also do so by simply sharing the streams around. But for now, thank you again everybody so much for joining, and I bid you the most fondest a duke. 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 Have fun, everyone. Bye -bye. See you guys later. Oh.